So welcome everyone again. We're very excited to go through automation and workflows details and how you can remove some of the repetitive tasks from your business uh, and at least your your day to day work day. And to do so, we have on the webinar with you today, Kelsey Griswold. She's the Senior Director of Product Management. We have Sarah Mack, Product Manager, and then I am Victoria Horn, Marketing Manager, and will be handling the facilitation for all the fun tech ins and outs of Zoom today. So with that in mind, I can actually go to the next slide and cover a little bit about where we're going today, what we're covering. And we're breaking this down into three main sections. The first is really talking about the impact of workplace automation. So what are these workflows? What problems can they solve? And most importantly, what benefits do they have for your business? Then Sarah is going to take us through a live demo of actually watching these workflows in action, some best practices and tips for configuring your Google Forms account, and five workflows that you can set up really quickly on your account today if you'd like. And then we'll bring it all back with a quick summary, a little bit of a recap, and covering all of your questions. So with that in mind, as you're going through the webinar today, if you have any questions whatsoever about anything that comes up, please feel free to throw those questions into the Q&A panel within your Zoom browser. It's not actually a browser. That's not the right word. Sorry. But if you open up your Zoom panel, you'll see a Q&A section. You can type all of your questions there. I'll either go through and answer them as we're going, if you have sort of a tech question about what's going to happen, or if you have more of a product-focused question, then we'll save those for the end and cover them all. So don't worry, we will get to your question. Just make sure you submit it to us so we can see it. And I believe that's everything I've got. So without any further ado, Kelsey, you want to take it away? Yeah. So let's talk about what workflow is. So if you want to jump to the next slide. So the literal definition as Webster Dictionary, I'm sure we all started an essay at one point in our lives with this, but the literal definition of a workflow is a workflow consists of an orchestrated and repeatable pattern of activity. It enables a systematic organization of resources into processes that transform materials and provide services or process information. So all of that is a really lengthy way of saying a workflow is something that takes care of something else for you. It does automate a task, and that's exactly what it means at GoForms. It means automation. Our workflow tool allows you to be able to assemble a series of automated actions that are initiated by a triggering event. It's as simple as that. It's I want these actions to happen when this action happens. And you can create these workflows to execute a number of different things like sending an email, transferring a form, upserting data into a spreadsheet, and all of that combined into a single workflow or individual workflows all based off of an event that happens with your form. So that's what workflow is at GoForms today. What this workflows solve um, is a lot of different use cases, a lot of different problems that everyday offices run into. Things like disjointed communication between the office and the field, customer communication, letting them know when a form is ready to be reviewed or when data has been captured that needs somebody needs to be alerted about, things like that. It removes the need for tedious back office manual entry. It, no longer will you have to take those forms that you're capturing using GoForms and manually update them into whatever system you're using. Workflow can take care of that all for you. It can also take care of complicated document routing. So no longer again, will your end users have to be able to remember who they need to transport to next after they've completed their section of the form. It can do that for them. Or it can let the person know that something is ready to be taken um, ownership of, uh, of a form to be able to start executing or going through their own approval process. And then finally, it can help with your manual data reporting. You can get that data into the systems that you're reporting on and using to analyze and understand the data that you're capturing using GoForms automatically. So you, again, don't have to do any manual entry or only take pieces and parts of a form um, because you just don't have the time to enter all that data into your system and to keep that going. Lots of problems that this tool solves. Some of the benefits around this um, are automating mobile form routing to specific teammates, customers, or even integrated apps. Workflow can help you do this all automatically based on the criteria that you set up. So what you guys needed to do with your form, form is created, form page one is completed, and automation can then take over that form, send it over to the next person. Uh, we can complete the form, we can send it as a draft, do lots of different things to make that process a lot more smooth for you and a lot more automated. 
You can dynamically and instantaneously update spreadsheet rows, analytic dashboards, and connect databases. This is where you take the power of the data you're capturing and really turn it into something you can use. Taking the data from the forms and automatically putting them into the systems you're using to understand your data, leverage your data, and optimize your data, all automatically removes both the human element of needing to have to do that manually or have manual data entry, but it also makes sure that your data is accurate. And that leads to that third point down there, instantly generate dispatch mobile forms pre-filled with data to teams, uh, to teams in the field. This allows you to be able to create a form, add data to it, again, removing the need for the human element and making sure your data is accurate, but it also gives your guys in the field a head start. If you can pre-fill some of that data using a workflow, using the information you already have from your third-party system, from GoForms form, all powered by workflow and then send it off to them, you're making their lives a lot easier and a lot quicker out in the field by starting off this form for them. All right, let's see it in action, Sarah. Okay, so I will go ahead and show a quick demo over workflow. Um, so in order to create or manage your workflows, you'll want to visit the workflow tab. Here you can see if you do have existing workflows in your account, you'll see them listed here. If not, you'll be prompted to create a new workflow. So in the top right, I'll select create, and that's gonna drop me into my workflow recipe library. In your workflow recipe, we have some pre-built um, recipes that you can utilize either for your whole entire workflow or you can use as a building point. Um, so you see the different options that we have listed now. This is something that we're going to continue to expand on and grow what recipes we have available. If you find that one of these recipes don't meet your need or you want to just start from scratch, you're able to do so by click clicking create custom in the top right hand corner and that's going to let you create a custom workflow from scratch. I'll go ahead and show the email completed form recipe to show you how to build that. Um, so when you select one of your recipes, it's gonna drop you into the workflow editor for that recipe. So you'll see for the email completed form, it has a series of steps that are needed for that recipe already populated for you to start with. You can also rename the workflow. So it's automatically going to give you the name of the workflow as the recipe name, um, but we do recommend putting an additional information into it so that you can keep your workflows organized as you continue to build them out. Um, so you could do naming conventions by maybe a specific group, region, um, and so forth, maybe even like your use case. So for this one, I'm gonna put demo. Um, so my workflow recipe here is triggered off of a form completion. So all of our workflows have a trigger of what kicks off that workflow. For the form completion, you do have certain details that you can set for it to be more customized to your use case and specific. So the first one is setting who it's completed by. The options that you have here is you can set it to be anyone, a specific user, or a specific group that you want it sent to or completed by. I'm gonna go ahead and select anyone for this. And then for template, you can select a specific template. So anytime a form of that template is completed, it would trigger off, or you can leave it blank. And if you leave it blank, it's going to trigger anytime any of your template forms are completed. So here I'll go ahead and select the demo work order one, just to be a little bit more specific. The last detail that you have in your form completed trigger is selecting if you want it to only run after the initial form completed. So forms, you can transfer forms to people, they can reopen forms um, and then complete it again. So this is dictating that you only want it to run that first time after a form completion. Um, so if you click that, it will only run then. And if you leave it unchecked, it will run every time that form is completed. So if it is reopened and closed again, this workflow would then run again. I'll go ahead and select next. And that drops us into the second step of our workflow recipe, which is the export form to PDF. So forms and GoForms don't innately live as PDFs in GoForms. So that's why we do need this step in order to export it as a PDF. Here, you don't have to do many changes on this step since you're utilizing it in a workflow recipe. We've pre-populated things for you. So like form ID, that information is pre-populated. You don't have to make any changes to it. If you did wanna add customization here, one of the ways you could is which pages do you wanna export? So utilizing this step, if you leave the pages blank, it's going to export all the different pages in your PDF. But if you wanted to only send a specific page to a person, you could decide to set your page as one or do a range of like four through six. So allow some more customization there. 
When I go to the next step, this is gonna might be my send email step. So I'm sending my notification and we'll include the PDF as an attachment. So here you can set your two input field to be a hard coded email. So if I wanted to send it to myself every time I could hard code my email in there, or you can also make it dynamic by using workflow variables. So workflow variables allow you to incorporate your form data into a data process. So these will be things we'll be referencing things such as like your form fields or things such as form ID and form name from whatever your trigger is. So for this, I know on my demo work order form, I'm capturing an email address and that's who I wanna dynamically send it to. So I'll scroll to find the output of that form field name for email. So this time now, whenever a form is completed and that email is sent, it's going to be to whatever email address is included in that form field. Then you can also add additional email addresses to your CC or your BCC and customize your subject line of your email. Let's do a quick one of GoForms form completed. The next step for sending an email is setting up what your body is going to be. So you can customize this information in here. Here is the completed form. And then if I want to, I can also reference um, form data within the body of my email. In order to reference that form data in the body of your email, you do need to use the same syntax that you see used here in the to input. So I'm going to go ahead and put in that syntax. It's based off my trigger. And then I'm going to put my customer field name. And as well, I'm going to reference sales rep. So it is important when you're referencing these form fields that you have an exact match to the field on your template. So if you don't know them off the top of your head, you'll want to make sure that you're either opening up your template and verifying that you have the accurate um, field name and doing a copy and paste of it. Or you can also find that information from your outputs in the form completed trigger. So the last input we have on this page is the attachments. And as you'll see, because we are doing this in a workflow recipe, it already has that populated. So it's grabbing the PDF that we generated from step two as your attachment for this step. Um, if you do add any additional steps, you can add additional attachments such as images here with the add button. Last area I'll highlight in this step is the advanced section. Um, so you can put from display names as well as reply to emails if you want to continue customizing this, as well as doing step conditions. So st step conditions are going to allow you to either skip a step or terminate the workflow based on specific conditions that are met. So when I hit add condition, it will put the layout for me. Um, so for this one, for the step condition that I want to do, I'm going to say that I want to terminate the workflow if that email field comes through as blank. So in my condition value, I'm going to find my email field again and select that. So it's going to populate there. And then my operator. So what am I expecting with that value? And I want it to be, if it's blank, if it's null, I'm going to terminate the workflow. So you can add additional um, step conditions as well, but for the demo purposes, I'll just show that one. So you can move forward with this recipe as a complete workflow as is, but if you have additional steps that are additional items that you want to include in your use case, you can use this as a building block. So you can add additional steps to a recipe. You'll just want to select the add step over here, and then it's going to pop up the add step uh, modal for you to select which application that you want to want to be next and what step. So that's how you would add an additional step. And you also have the capability of moving your steps around in a workflow. So if I did add an additional step and I wanted it to occur before I sent an email, I would just utilize the arrow to move it up. So now that my workflow is fully set up, I'm going to go ahead and activate it. Um, activating it is a required thing in order for your workflow to trigger and kick off. Um, so you do need to activate it in order for it to work. And then you'll hit save. So now, since I have an activated workflow for an email completed form, anytime my form completed trigger criteria is met with the demo work order being completed, it will kick off this workflow. So now I'm gonna also show how to create a custom workflow from scratch. So from here, I'm gonna hit create custom. 
And that drops me into a completely blank workflow editor and giving me um, lots of flexibility to select what triggers I want and what steps. Um, so for the add trigger, here I have a list of triggers that are available to my account. So the list that you see here, you'll be able to see any that we are considered that are considered self-service for you to utilize. Um, you might find that some of these are outside of your subscription. If one is outside of your subscription, you'll see a tag next to it, and it will say the subscription tier that you would need to upgrade in order to have access to. Um, so what our workflow triggers are um, at the self-service level, we have a form completed trigger, receives a transferred form. So anytime a transferred form is received, you could select a specific or user or group receiving it. Um, a schedule trigger allowing you to put a repeated schedule that you want this workflow to kick off every day or every week. And then public form submitted. So similar to the form completed, but based off of our public forms, if one is sub submitted, it will kick off the workflow and you can um, add additional details to make it more custom of when that's kicked off. And then the last one we have is a form deleted trigger. So if you see a form is deleted in your trigger, in your workflow area and you want to send an email notifying that a form has been deleted, that's a common use case we see with that one. So for this, I'll go ahead and select the form completed. And I'm gonna set up a form to form workflow. So I'm gonna do a basic form to form workflow use case. So again, we've kind of, we've gone over this form completed trigger. So I'm gonna leave my completed at anyone and I'm gonna use the same template to kick it off. I'll do my demo work order. This one I am gonna select for it to only run after the initial form completion because I want my form to be created the first time but I don't want various forms created after if there for some reason was any um, changes to the initial form or um, updates that I don't want to continue to build those forms off of. So I'm also going to name my workflow at the top. I have my trigger step and now I'm gonna do my add step. So like what we saw on the trigger add step, you'll see the options that are self-service for you to utilize within GoForms. If something does happen to be outside of your subscription, you'll see a tag with that um, needed subscription in order to get access to. Um, so these are the different ones that we have as self-service right now, um, but I'm going to be doing a create form step, which is a go form step. So I'll select go forms and then create form. So for my create form step, this allows me based on my form completion to create a brand new form and potentially populate form details with it as well. So I can map over details from my form completed step and populate them into a newly created form. So the first input that is required is your template. So you do need to have an existing template that this form is going to be based off of. Um, so here I'm gonna select a template for my account and it'll be my follow-up form. So from that template, then I need to decide what will be the name of my form. Um, so I'm gonna do follow-up and then do a little customization here. I will add um, the customer name. So I'm gonna scroll down to customer. So this form name, every time it's created will be follow up and then based on the form completed, the customer name. Now your form, every form in GoForms has to have a form owner. So I'm gonna select a value from this dropdown. Um, if you want to hard code it, you can select one of your users. Um, so I'm gonna select Danny, but you can also customize it if you want this to be dynamic based off of a form field um, from your trigger. But for the demo purposes, I'll go ahead and hard code it to Danny. And then here at the bottom is where you optionally can add if you want to map in form population. So the fields that populate here are based off of my follow-up form template. Um, so I'm looking at my follow-up form template uh, field name. So I'm gonna select customer here as well as notes. So I want to bring over both of those to pre-populate them in my new form. Here in value, you can either utilize the um, workflow variables again to reference data from your form that was completed, or you can hard code your information. So I'll go ahead and bring that information over using my workflow variable for customer, and then hard code my, this is a note for my notes. And then all you have to do is activate your workflow and you have a form to form workflow. 
So my form completed, once it's completed, we'll trigger this new form to be created and the owner will be Danny and those information in my follow-up form for customer and notes will be pre-populated. So when I open up that form within GoForms, I will see the customer name populated and my note populated as this is a note. So the last thing for the demo purposes that I wanna show is also how to manage your workflows um, with the success and failures, as well as receiving notifications. So when your workflow jobs run, if you see a workflow error as a failure and you want to make sure that you're receiving that as a notification, you'll want to go into your settings area. So I'm gonna go into save my workflow always a best practice, and then go into my account settings under notifications. So under my notifications, you'll see that there is a workflow error area. So you can enable a notification to receive an email or an in-app web only or both. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I want to receive an in-app web only notification. For this one, if I have a workflow that fails, I'll get a notification in the little bell. It'll say that my workflows failed, name of my workflow and link to it so that I can go troubleshoot it and try to fix whatever issue. Um, so do encourage you to turn these on just so that you can see what, when you do, like if a workflow error does arise, you are able to quickly action on it. Um, in order to view those outside of getting those notifications on the workflow tab, you'll wanna select view jobs if you want to see all of your workflow jobs and see their success or failures. But if you want to target it to a specific workflow that you want to see if it's been successful or if it's failed, you can view that workflow title and go over to actions and select view jobs. So this view jobs just puts you in that filtered view for that specific workflow of if you've had a successful workflow or a failed workflow. So you can see I ran this workflow twice this morning and I had one that failed and one that was a success. So learning more about my failed, I'll just click into that workflow job and it'll show me what attempts I had for it. So for this one, I only had one attempt. I didn't rerun it, um, but it will give you the information of which step your workflow failed on. So my export PDF, I can see that was the step that caused my failure. And then when I click into it, I can find out more details about that step. Um, so here I can find my error log message in red for that my form ID was not found. So then I can use that to further troubleshoot my workflow, going back in, updating my form ID to make sure it's accurate. And then I can do a rerun for that workflow. Um, so that's just a high level of how you can manage and troubleshoot from the workflow area as well. So from that five simple workflows that you can implement today, you can email a scheduled report. Um, so emailing a scheduled report, you'd have your schedule as your trigger and it would allow you to put a repeated timeline. So like daily, monthly, weekly cadence of your export being, or of your GoForms report being exported to a CSV and then sending that via email. You can also do a notification of an email completed form uh, like we showed in the demo. And then file upload. So uploading a completed form to a third-party storage such as Google, Box, or Dropbox. Another one is our add row to Google Sheet. So with this, based on your form completion, you can take that for their form field details and either add it to a sheet or upsert it to a sheet if it's um, or update an existing row within that sheet. And then the last one is that form to form workflow like we demoed of based off of a form completion, creating a new form and potentially also populating information on that form. All right. That is a lot and it is intense and actually is a fantastic way to, to open up the door to learning a little bit more about workflows, which I'm pretty excited about. We've actually got a few sort of specific ones, uh, questions that are coming in about, um, well, specifically a QuickBooks integration. Is there a way that you would mind hopping back into the platform and actually showing how someone would take maybe a form that they've filled out on uh, let's say a technician is in the field, they've filled out a form, 
and now the office manager or administrator wants to send that data into QuickBooks. Can you show if that would be possible? I do not have QuickBooks um, on my current account um, to view for setting up a workflow, but it is an option that we have within workflows. It is one of our workflow um, connected apps that does require pro services setup. So right now it is not something that we consider self-service. So it would require pro service to either train the user or set up them um, based on the use case with pro services. I think that's perfect. Thank you. Sorry, I know that one's very specific, but Beth, I hope that helps cover the question a little bit, but also because you do have such a specific question, if you want, we are more than happy to work with you on getting a demo scheduled, which by the way, if anybody on this webinar would like to have an exclusive opportunity to get a demo, to see a little bit more about GoForms and how it really fits your business specifically and what automations you're after, this is a great place to request that. All right, let's see what other questions we've got. Um, we've got one from Mickey asking for the create form step. Are you able to populate a date field on the new form as the completed form date plus one to pre-fill a form for tomorrow? Yes, so in those areas with the input, you if you have that as a field um, from your form completed, you can reference that. You'll just need to also add a calculation to it. So within your calculation, you would reference that workflow variable and then the date plus one calculation. And our workflow uh, calculations leverage the same calculation builder that you see in the template builder. So it'll be almost the same syntax. There's slight differences between the use cases, but they leverage the same power. So you'd be able to use the same thing. Perfect. All right. Next question comes in from Dawn. Where does the information in the workflow get taken from to enable a form to be pre-populated? Yeah, so let me pull up that workflow. So in order for it to enable it to be pre-populated, it's pulling it from the trigger step. So here for my workflow variable, it looks at the trigger and then it's get grabbing my output from that trigger of entree description. So it'll be based on the form that you completed that entree description. Um, so anything that would be captured in that specific form under entree description maps into that output. So that's how it looks when you pre-populate it. Um, so it's looking back to whichever step that you previously referenced and that um, output selection from that step. Perfect. All right, let's find the next one. All right, from Chelsea, is there a limit to how many workflows you can build within your account? Not today. So we don't limit you on the number of workflows or the number of steps per workflow. And workflows available starting at our team tier. So you can build some of these simple cloud storage uh, workflows using the recipes or using that custom workflow starting at our team. And there's no limit on the number that you could build or what you can add to it. It's only the steps and the triggers that are available to you that we limit per subscription. So what you'll see at team are more simple cloud storage based uh, workflows that you can add and build. And then once you get up to advanced, that's when you start being able to use that data by uploading it to a spreadsheet or adding it into a different system that you're connected with, where you start to be able to use and leverage the data within the forms itself. And then getting up to enterprise just even elevates that more to some of those more custom integrations like a Salesforce or more advanced systems that we're integrating with working with our pro services team. But no limits. Okay. Yeah. Everyone loves unlimited, right? <laughs> That's All right, fine. Jason has a question about uh, what is the key slash value used for? And if I need to ask for more details, I can. Yeah, so the key slash value is more of a legacy input. So previously when we had workflow, we didn't have any of these like nice friendly input names for like template. So that would have all been done in key and value. 
Um, key and value is something that we are going to be moving down under the advanced section in the future. Um, but if you do have existing workflows, you might find that they still utilize that key value area. Um, but for new workflows you're creating, you shouldn't be having to utilize key value. Perfect. All right, another one from Dawn. Is there an option to only have completed pages be exported on a workflow? Um, I think at this time, we don't have an option for only completed forms um, as part of the export form to PDF step, but that is a great feedback. And if we could capture that in user voice, um, that'd be something I'd be very interested in learning more about. Actually, if you don't mind, uh, talking about the feature request portal a little bit would be fantastic. Do you mind telling people how to, or, or even showing them how to get to the feature request portal so that they can actually submit direct requests and new features they'd like to see within the GoForms platform? I'm just making you go all over the place today. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I do love all the questions that are coming in, so please keep those coming, everyone. Yeah, really great questions, guys. For our feature request portal, um, all you need to do is go to portal.goforms.com, like Sarah's showing here. Uh, this is where you get to, to directly give feedback to our product team. Our product team, myself and Sarah included, are directly responsible for going through each of these different items that are submitted. There's a lot of them. You guys have some really great feedback, a lot of great ideas of how GoForms can better serve your business and better make you successful. So what we use this for is to gather that feedback from you guys, and then we'll reach back out asking you questions or giving you updates on a certain feature or letting you know if it's a feature that we're simply just not gonna do because we're not ready for it yet or it's not something that in our direction that we're moving towards. But this is the best place to get started. So if you guys just go to portal.goforms.com, there's a little video up there at the top uh, showing you how to use it. You can log in using your GoForms login already. So just log in with your normal GoForms credentials. And then you can go down to those sections down below, you'll see, uh, if you have feedback on the workflow tool, for example, you can select the section for workflow and see what others have submitted, see what comments people have made or what feedback the product team has given back to those comments or to those features or submit your new idea. And then that comes again right back to our product team where we go through and we evaluate all of them. We hear your ideas. We listen to your feedback. And most of the time we reach right back out saying, hey, can you tell me more about this use case? Can you let us know what you're thinking here? Um, but that's our feedback portal. It's a great place um, for you guys to give your feedback directly to us. Thank you both for the details and for the surprise navigation. <laughs> All right, the next question comes in from Lori. They want to know about an integration with Go High Level or Smartsheet. Yes, yeah, so we do have an integration with Smartsheet. Um, right now it's not a self-service integration, but it is with Pro Services. So we can set up Smartsheet integrations. Um, but the other one we do not have a formal integration for right now. Um, that's something that if we could capture on user voice and see if we could maybe potentially in the future add that, or you also have the potential to um, make connections via the API if needed as well. All right, what about a form being initiated only when a specific value has been added in the completed form? A question in from Jill. Yeah, so right now um, on the workflow trigger, we don't have an area where you can do it based off of specific form field. That is something that we are looking into and a popular request that we see in user voice. Um, but we do have a bit of a workaround that you can utilize. So if you want it to um, kick off based off a specific form field, we can do a workaround where you would utilize that step condition area where you set what that value, the field you were looking at, what you want the value to be, and then you can either terminate the workflow if it's not met, or you can skip to a different step. So we have a roundabout way that you can currently do that. Um, that is something that we are looking to um, hopefully include at some point in the product in the future. All right, here's another exciting one. This one comes in from Chad. So we've shown how to create the workflow. Can you show the results from the workflow? So I don't suppose you have a uh, maybe a PDF sample of what one of the forms looks like as after it's been exported as a PDF, or um, I'm not going to ask you to try to dig through your email to try to find an email that was sent from the platform. 
That feels a little too off the cuff. Sorry, Chad. But is something we can cover in a personalized demo if you'd like. So definitely keep us posted on that. Yeah, and Chad, that's a great question. The workflow output is really what you determine it to be. So in Sarah's example with the form to form example, as soon as that form is completed, a new form will be created using the data pulling from that original form. So really as an end result, that form, whoever's gonna own that form, so say that Sarah is gonna be the one that's owning that form, as soon as it's created, it should create a brand new form in GoForms ready for her to start using and already populating that data that you had selected in that workflow. So in that example, there'd be really just a GoForms form that has that data that you had started with from your original form. If you're doing a form email, so your form completed and you're sending off an email, that email will have the exact text that you added into that body or using the, the text from the form itself. So you're using those form fields to dynamically populate the text of the body of that email. And then it'll attach the form as an attachment to the email. So it really is what it is, what your end result of your workflow is or what you're telling those actions to do automatically based off that trigger. All right, it looks like we have one more question in from Alyssa. And she is wondering a little bit about the email address in the form. Uh, Sarah, I think you walked through this at one point. Would you mind sh jumping back into the platform? I'm going to yeah. make you navigate everywhere. I'm so sorry. Um, and chat a little bit about what are your options as far as selecting an email address from within the form or copying it to multiple people, things like that. Yeah. So in the send email with the two, um, always have the option to hard code. You can do multiple email addresses too by adding a comma to separate the different ones, but you can also be utilizing any of the fields on your form as long as you're capturing an email address in this. So in my template for the demo work order, I have a specific field where I'm capturing an email and it, it's my email template field. So when I'm scrolling down to the email, that's the field I'm referencing here, but I could also have potentially different fields capturing other email addresses as well. So you might have like manager email and sales rep email. So anything that has an email that's gonna be populated from your form field, you can reference using this workflow um, variables and it will be dynamic based on whatever information is inputted for that form. So if I inputted um, my manager's email into this email area, that's who it would be sending it to. You can reference multiple of these as well, just by using a comma. So I think I have a sales rep one in here as well. Uh, we'll pretend sales is sales email. So then it would be sending to that email address as well as the sales email address dynamically based on what information is captured in the form. Perfect. All right, it looks like that is the last open question we've got right now but we will be recording, we are currently recording this webinar and we will be sending out a recap about it. So if you have any questions that come up between now and then, or if you go back and rewatch a certain part and have a question come up at that point, do not hesitate to reply back to that email and let us know about any questions that you've got. In the meantime, to kind of recap everything that we've gone over today, because it was a lot of information, so the biggest things that we want you to walk away from today is knowing how GoForms can help you automate the daily tasks in your work life. So whether that's make sh making sure all of your forms get automatically stored in cloud storage solutions that you've already got implemented, whether it's making sure that copies of completed forms get emailed to people, it's saving you those day-to-day -day tasks of having to constantly go in, manually send it, manually store it, manually export it into a new format, all those fun things. We also covered how to automatically kick off a workflow when a form is completed or a couple of the other triggers that Sarah mentioned and went over with you. So there are a few different options for different ways that you have the flexibility to make sure your forms and the form data within them go exactly where you need them when you want them to. <laughs> then there's also the from form to database options. So this was covering ways to make sure that your data gets to the place where you can actually use it because data is amazing and valuable and completely worthless if you're not doing anything with it. So make sure that it goes into your CRM or your ERP or your accounting software or whatever other custom database you need it to be in. Workflows are gonna help you get it there. 
And then as Kelsey mentioned, workflow functionality is available on every paid subscription tier. So whether you are using this for a smaller team and you find that some of the, the team addition fits better than perfect or all the way up to advanced and enterprise options, we have we have workflows available for you. And as Sarah mentioned a few times, our professional services team can also help you with implementing some of these different custom workflows to make sure that it actually does what you need it to, especially for some of those more elaborate systems. Oh, I did it backwards. We already looked at the questions. Oh, but we do have announcements too. Uh, the announcements, is, uh, one of my personal favorites is that the GovQuorum certification course is live. You can go learn all the ins and outs and the fundamentals of using GovForms, how to get the most out of it, and how to make sure that your entire team can utilize GovForms to their best abilities. We also have a webinar coming up from GoForms and eSign, which is the e-signature capability, changing it from just having digital signature captured. And now we also have eSign Act and UETA compliant e-signature signature and initials fields. So that'll be on January 19th. We hope to see you all there. And Kelsey, I think you can actually speak to this one a little bit more that we're looking for your feedback or was this Sarah that had more thoughts on this one about our product survey? Yeah. yeah, guys, like we mentioned with the portal, we're always looking for your feedback, but specifically Sarah and team are working on uh, projects within Workflow that we would love for you guys being part of this webinar to partake in if you have the time. So Sarah, you wanna talk a little bit about the survey? Yeah, so this one will be included in the follow-up email, but it's just a survey to gather your contact information if you're interested in providing um, feedback. But we are looking to discuss kind of approval processes, either ways that you're doing it now within GoForms or ways you're handling it outside of GoForms. Um, so if you have any feedback on those topics, I would love to hear from you. Perfect. Well, that I believe covers everything uh, but again, don't worry, this will all be covered in a more brief format in a recap email sent out to you all for attending shortly. And even if uh, you had to jet or apparently this announcement is going to all the people who aren't here, who can't hear it, if you were not able to attend, then it will also be sent to you as well. And uh, I think we just have contact information on the last slide. Is that right? Yes. So I did mention that feel free to reply to the email that we send you, but if you don't want to wait, you don't have to. If you're already a customer with GoForms, then please feel free to reach out to account management at GoForms.com. If you have tech or IT questions or something feels like it's just not quite working right or you're having questions about the platform, support at GoForms.com is the perfect email address for you. And if you are brand new to GoForms and this was a lot of information, but you're really excited about it, then please reach out to us at sales at goforms.com and our team can make sure that we get you set up with a one-on-one -on -one demo and walk you through exactly how GoForms can help you automate everything form and data related within your business. Any other closing comments, Sarah or Kelsey? No, thank you guys. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Thank you guys for joining. Um, we we're really excited to share this really powerful feature with you um, and excited to share more with you as we grow it. So please give us your feedback and help us learn more. Absolutely. Thank you everyone for joining us and hopefully we'll see you on January 19th. Bye guys. Bye.